Hello friends, in this video we shall see what are the flask extensions. In the beginning we mentioned that flask is a micro framework in the sense that it only provides a minimal uh, sort of uh, set of utilities to build a flask application. But many of the other layers like the data abstraction layer or the form validation facilities, these kinds of activities or these facilities are not provided in built into the flask application framework. So, in order to provide these this, this support, this kind of support like for example, the ORM support or the form validation support etcetera, flask depends upon the external extensions. So, the additional functionality that has to be provided with the help of the these extensions. In addition to the flask framework, different you know utilities like providing the JSON support etcetera that is already present in the in the form of a flask framework. This is not enough for the development of the full fledged or full stack as I call it. Full stack framework facilities or features are not available in the micro framework. So, therefore, the flask extensions must be incorporated into the flask environment. The flask extension registry is there which gives you the list of all the available flask extensions. This is the directory of extensions that are available. Required extensions can be downloaded from the depository with the help of the pip utility. So, be on, on one hand the flask is a micro framework, but, but on the other hand it is extensible. So, you can plug and play the different extensions into your working environment and enhance or increase the capability of your flask uh, you know installation or uh, you know flask virtual environment that you have created with the help of the pluggable extensions that can be downloaded from the, uh, the repository of uh, the extensions with the help of this pip utility. Here a few of these flask extensions are listed and their usage or utility is being explained. For example, there is a extension called as flask mail. This extension allows you to have an SMTP interface. SMTP is a well known protocol for handling or managing the email services. So, that SMTP interface if you want to provide to your flask application, all you have to do is to add the flask mail extension into your application. Flask WTF, WT forms is a very useful forms library, web forms library. Flask WTF is a extension or, or is a module which you know uh, incorporates this WT forms library into the flask environment. So, it adds the rendering and validation of the WT forms that is called as the flask WTF. Another very important extension that is very widely used is called as flask SQL alchemy. Actually, SQL Alchemy is a very popular ORM mapper library, object relationship mapper. Later on during the course, we will see what is the SQL Alchemy and what are its uh, 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 you know uh, features. But for the timing, it is it's sufficient to know that SQL Alchemy is a mapper between the object oriented Python program and the uh, database uh, app, database products like SQLite or MySQL or anything. So, this is a mapping activity is done by this SQL Alchemy. It maps the database with the classes and objects that are defined in the in Python program. Flask SQL Alchemy is an extension which 
brings the SQL alchemy support into the Flask program, Flask application. Then there is a Flask SciJax. You know that the Ajax or JQ library, J jQuery library is a very popular client side uh, you know programming tool that is very popularly used nowadays. So this Flask SciJax provides you an interface with jQuery so that the Ajax features can be easily incorporated into your Flask application. So such like many Flask extensions are uh, you know available in the Flask, uh, in the extension registry. I am just trying to uh, explain a few of them and in fact we are going to study in more depth the Flask mail, WTF and SQL alchemy during the course of our uh, further videos. Since an extension is nothing but a python module. What you have to do? You have to import that extension or that module into your flask application by saying from whatever the name of the extension. For example, I am writing flask foo. So, flask from flask foo import. Any module as you know is a collection of different classes and functions. So, from this particular module, whichever class or function or classes or functions you want, you can import. So, this is a general syntax of importing a desired resource from a Python module that is applicable to the extension also. But then there are two different you know syntaxes that are used for importing. This particular syntax is currently prevailing in the flask development number 0 0.10 onwards. If you have a installation of flask which is between 0.7 to 0.10, 0.1. So, you can have this particular syntax applicable or usable only if you run flus, uh, in the first place you run this flask ext compat.py. So, you get hold of this python script, execute this, then only you will be able to use this way of importing the uh, module or extension. Otherwise, you will have to do what? You will have to just say import flask underscore foo. Specific resources of the module, if you want to incorporate or import using this syntax, first you will have to get hold of this, execute this and then say import flask ext compat, flask ext compat dot activate, you have to activate this feature first and then only you will be able to do this. If you do not have this, then you can only say import flask foo. That is the difference in syntax for the flask version prior to point 0.1 and uh, after point 0.1 of course you can use this. So, this is a slight bit of difference in between these two, uh, the two different uh, ways of uh, you know, importing the flask extension into your program. So, having seen this, now we will try to find out more about the different flask extensions, specifically the flask mail extension we will see first, then followed by the SQL alchemy like that. So, this was a sort of a brief overview of the flask extensions.